All right, everybody, if there are two colors having to do with Guam outside of the colors of our flag, it would be brown, for like skin tones typically, and green. <laughs> but we need a lot more green on our island, so that's why I have my friends Rudy and Christine here. And we are talking about keeping Guam green. Christine, you had no idea I was going to say what I just said, so I know you're no. just waiting to crack up. Works. We need Works. Guam to be more green, though. We do. Okay, we how do. are we going to get that done? Rudy, how are we going to get that done? Uh, well, Passing the buck, all right. <laughs> Managerial efficiency in effect tonight on the show. Uh, well, um, on Father's Day, was it, we had a fire over at, at um, Koto Conservation Area, which is the, um, the, the Tarzan Falls Trail. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go in there um, on July 27th of this, uh, on Saturday, 8.30 a.m. And we're going to, our goal is to plant at least 100 trees and as well as do some other um, uh, management practices to help stop the erosion. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of trees will we be planting? Um, um, native trees such as dauk and uh, some pandanus, um, probably some uh, native pl plumeria as well. Okay, very, very cool. Yeah. So we're, we're making sure that Guam's native flora and fauna continues to thrive here. Correct. Yes. All right, outstanding. Okay, um, how long will it actually take for these those trees to mature? And like, uh, uh, are they saplings already when, when we They're, they're them? saplings, they're, okay. they're at least a um, couple months old. Okay. And, um, with the, so right now what we have there was, was acacia trees, which uh, help build the soil up, and we're gonna we're gonna eventually replace them with the, the native trees. Um, so, in concurrence with uh, the acacia trees, the they should thrive faster as opposed to just planting them out in in uh, bare savanna grasslands. Mm. Okay, now Christine, remember when we did our live stream? Yes. This is what maybe two two and a half months ago. Correct. And we were at the same area where Rudy was just talking about, like on Cross Island Road, before you get to like the big, yes. the w big wind turbine that everybody loves. We got so many comments on that show when Chris Barnett was interviewing you and people mm -hmm. were like, I had no idea that Guam could look like such a wasteland there. Yeah. And they were like, okay, it's, it's not something where it's like a bunch of physical waste and, you know, people have like deposited, you know, diapers and yeah. uh, dishwashers and everything like that. People were just like, that all came from a fire. People, people who have lived here for 40 years were blown away. Right, right. It's this spot. So this site, the, the forest, the fire burned up behind it and it burned out towards the road. Mm. So when you drive by uh, Tarzan Falls Trailhead, that's what you're going to notice that, that yes, it burned up front, but it was because it came from the back. And we're talking about 30, 40 year old stand that spent that time replenishing soil and really building that base. So now we can go back and hopefully be more successful with native plants. But that interview that we did, um, that live stream, that was pretty incredible because we were able to show just the scale at which it could burn and it has burned. And hopefully people will recognize that impact and come and join us for our future reforestation projects. Hopefully that motivated yeah. people. Because I remember afterwards, I jumped in the comments and somebody said, man, it looks like death. And I was like, uh, you know, we haven't invented <laughs> smell of vision yet. But I was like, if you could only smell just, <laughs> right. it singes your nostrils. I mean, it just makes you so sad. Right. And that was a completely natural occurrence as far as we know, right? Well, or just because it's a dry season. It's dry season and the, the vegetation was, as we say, primed for burning because it was so dry. Every, the, the moisture content was low in, our, in the grassy fuels which we saw there. Mm -hmm. But it, the, these fires on Guam don't occur naturally. They are human-caused fires. And I think I said human-caused ignitions, which mm -hmm. got a lot of flack for. <laughs> put, the, put the blame on but irresponsible people. But that's what it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's human-caused and when you, so you saw that as grassland burned. When you come out to the Tarzan Falls Trail and you see the devastation there, it really doesn't look like Guam. Like you walk through that burn char and you have trees that are, that are in the background, because we've cleared away um, hazard trees for the service project. But when you walk through the stand, it's, it's very humbling because it's, it's just charred earth. And as far as retaining water, and we're moving into rainy season. So now we've lost that vegetation, and many of those trees are going to die. There's a kid that went to Notre Dame, and he, he jumped in the comments, and he goes, you know, yep. all, my, all my years going to high school, just down the street, mm -hmm. I knew trees that were, like, over there and everything. They're yep. not there anymore. Right. And now with rainy season coming, our flood issues that we will most likely see, because every year we have flood concerns on the island, now we don't have the, those trees and their roots and that base helping to retain moisture and water mm -hmm. in place. So this is where a lot of our flooding issues come from. And that is one of, one of the most photographed places on the island because you can yeah. see, you know, miles and miles away of just 
lush fields and green and everything like that. Yeah. Okay, so Rudy, now that basically uh, Christine has done her part, <laughs> guilting people into taking care of Mother Earth and everything, like oh, yeah. what skills should people have if they want to show up? What mm -hmm. equipment should they bring? And how do we get how do we get involved? Um, well, on let's see on the. If on the flyer, it says, um, you know, wear clothes, toes, shoes, um, bring a hat, um, some sunblock because there's no trees now, um, some gloves. And basically what you're going to be helping us to do is um, plant, the, plant the native trees. Uh, we were supposed to plant 100, but we might have to, uh, ever since we put this flyer out, <laughs> Uh, we've good we've been getting good a good response, and we might have to plant even more good. on that day. So that's something to look forward to. We're glad to make you guys yeah. work even harder than you <laughs> than you intended. <laughs> yeah, because we're taking care of Guam. Yes. yes. Okay. If if people have never planted a tree before, do they can they go there and they say, you know, I really I was motivated by your interview on KUAM. I really want to get involved, but I've you know I don't have a green thumb. I've never done this kind of work before. What what can I do to help? Oh, well, we'll we'll show you how to do it. All right. Yeah. We have staff there that's been planting trees for years. So um, we'll have them take care of um, some groups on, on what, what they're going to do in this area as well as planting the trees. Okay, yeah. and hopefully this is going to be the only time we have to address this, at least for the foreseeable future. But, uh, Christine, if people would like more information or they want to, you know, network with you and your fine staff and figure out, like, yeah. what's going on, how can they contact you? Thank you for that. Um, you can <laughs> follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Guam Forestry, one word. Uh, you could give us a call, 300-7977 or 5. And we're right off Dairy Road in Mingilao, across from Price Elementary. And we're, we're there, so we like company. It gets pretty mm -hmm. quiet if we're in the office. There's a lot of nice trees there, too. Yes, <laughs> yes. And hopefully it's going to stay can that way. come visit Rudy and maybe enroll in the stewardship program. Very nice. Okay, Rudy, we got about maybe 30 more seconds, but tell us about that. So the stewardship program is, uh, is mainly for landowners that have big tracts of land that have, um, let's say, erosion control issues, or they want to convert their grasslands into... Native, native forest um, or, um, you know, habitat enhancement for, for, for their property. All and right. so they just sign up uh, with me and we'll do a site visit and we do recommendations on what they, they can plant on their property. It's free. It's free. <laughs> Not, okay, yeah. good point. Right, it's thank free. You, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so in closing, basically one of the most fundamental rules, take care of the island and the island takes care of you. Correct. Yep. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, please stay tuned. We are back. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-2000.